This is a video all about creativity and in particular the things we can do when we are feeling a little bit stuck creatively. I've created videos like this before and I look back on them now and I think at the time it was more a way of trying to convince myself to, to do something about my lack of creativity at that time. What I've learned over the last six months as I've really tried to get back in touch with my creative side is that you just cannot force it. No matter what you try and do, you cannot force it. It will only return when it's ready. So all you can do is lay the best possible groundwork to put yourself in a position to be ready for when it returns. And I'm gonna go through a few things in this video that really worked for me in the very recent past. Now, I understand everyone's different. These things won't relate to some people. They won't work for some people. But I think a combination of some of the tips that I set out in this video and that I've spoken about before will help you back on that road to creativity if it's something you're struggling with. Now, when I look back on the things I've tried to do to ignite my creativity, like I say, particularly over the last six months, I've always been looking at external factors. What, what can I do? What can I change that will help me be more creative? And it's been quite recently that I've worked out that it's internal issues that have put this block in place. Things internally with me, feelings and thoughts that I've not liked, that I've tried to suppress, that have almost blocked my way of thinking and blocked those creative pathways in my brain. Now that sounds like it's quite an intense thing to go through and I'll be completely honest, it is. I've, I've alluded to in previous videos about things in my past that have been difficult for me and, and despite that being a long time ago, it's only been really recently that I've really got to the root of that problem. And I think that internal pain and that discomfort within me and the the kind of behavior patterns and thoughts that arose from them are the things that have really kind of, like I say, blocked that creative pathway. I honestly believe that pretty much everyone could benefit with some sort of therapy. And I'm not gonna get preachy on this, but even if it's not therapy, just talking about our issues more and more is definitely helping people along the way. Even if it's with your friends or your family, I think, expressing the difficulties in our life is really the only way of getting past them. I know from experience now not to suppress negative feelings and, and bad thoughts. The only way past them is, is by living them and accepting them. And you can unlock the good areas just by living the bad. It's the only way to achieve that balance. I think the only way to live your authentic life is by embracing all aspects of it, as hard as that may be. And by living that authentic life, we are able to freely, creatively express ourselves. And I think from that, you should only ever compare yourself with yourself. Compare where you are on your journey to where you have been in the past. I think it's really useful to look over your old work. So I looked over my old videos that I mentioned. The, the one up here is seven tips to get through creative block. And I think some of them are valid and will definitely work for people, but I can see how I've evolved as a filmmaker and a photographer since then. And that was a couple of years ago. Looking at your journey and how you've improved is the best way to inspire further creativity. Looking at other people's work in my opinion, just isn't. You can use other people's work to give you ideas and give you inspiration, but mimicry is something that will only send us backwards on that creative journey. It's not something that's gonna fulfill us. And fulfillment, I think, is at the core of creativity. When we're creatively fulfilled, that's when we're out there having the best ideas and producing our best work. Now, I mentioned difficult feelings and internal pain earlier, but creativity can sometimes come from pain. And I had a conversation with someone earlier this week who said that their creativity came from the place of pain. And they've dealt with this pain, this, this mental pain over the last few weeks. And with that, their, their creativity and their want to make videos has really diminished. And I completely get that. I think especially with my earlier photography, a lot of my negative moods were conveyed in that photography. I remember my wife always said to me, 
we're not putting that on the wall, it's too dark. And that was just where I was in life. So you've got to allow ideas to shift as your thought process shifts. And that may introduce a new style of shooting. It may cause your style to evolve, but I don't think you can cling on and grasp onto that style as being a part of you. Allow yourself to evolve and allow your creative style to evolve with you. So the heart of creativity are ideas and to be able to act on those ideas, we need motivation to do them. That can come through action, inspiration or anything else. But having the ideas is, is key and they often come to us when we least expect them to. I know when I'm trying to think of ideas for a video, trying to force it, it almost sends me further from being able to have a good idea. So we need to allow ourselves the freedom and the time and the space to think. And the best thing I've found for that is, is by just going out and having a walk without a camera, just, just being outside or, you know, just, just doing things that allow my brain the freedom to generate stuff. And that's, I think one of the reasons why we have so many good ideas in the shower, I do anyway. My idea for my next video that should be next week, actually, I thought of in the shower yesterday morning. So hit the subscribe button below and you'll get to see that next week. But if you do something with the sole purpose of, right, I'm gonna now generate some ideas for some photography project or a video or something like that, it won't work. Allow yourself the freedom to do it. And start small. So I've been feeling slowly more and more creative over the last few weeks. And I think that's shown with, with the videos I've produced. But this all started about five or six weeks ago when I went to the beach for a sunrise and I didn't even take my camera with me. I just had a walk along the beach and I just took it all in. And that really kind of kick-started me. And since then I've, I've done another small bits of shooting, but nothing major. And I've kind of just built myself up slowly. And then last Wednesday, I went out and shot last week's video, which is linked here. And I was out shooting all day and I shot a load of stuff for another video as well. And I've not felt that into my creativity for years. I honestly think it's probably four or five years since I've been that into it. And it's just through hard work over the last six months in what I said earlier, processing internal things. That's how I've managed to achieve that. So patience is definitely necessary if, if you are deep in a creative rut. Someone else that's helped me is getting in touch with my why. Why am I actually doing this? Why do I want to make things? And I think there's definitely a risk in the modern day of, of chasing the wrong metrics, chasing likes and comments and subscribers and followers and everything else. And the last two weeks, I've really took it back to my enjoyment of making videos. And that really seems to show when I look at my work and I compare it to stuff I was doing maybe a year ago, when I probably was just doing it to try and get validation on social media. And then something else I read that is just so true is, is getting in touch with your inner child. I know a lot of adults that I know wouldn't describe themselves as being creative, but when we were kids, everyone was creative everyone did creative stuff and i think it's our education systems that kind of channel that out of us we're all makers and i think getting in touch with that again can really help some of us i know there's a lot of creative activities that i stopped doing when i was probably about 13 or 14 and slowly i'm getting in touch with them again and part of that's because i've now got kids of my own but part of it's just because i want to and it's just a fun thing to do being an adult's hard, you know? I think we're almost subliminally taught to suppress fun. And I think that has a big impact on how we act. We try to retain control too much of the time. I certainly do anyway, and that's how I've behaved over the last 15 years. Letting go of that control can help us get in touch with who we actually are. And at the root of that, we will find our creative visions and our ideas start to flow. So I mentioned earlier that I've made videos on trying to regain creativity before. And the most recent one I did was back in September and that's linked up here now. And I look back on that now and firstly, it makes me realize how scary that haircut was. Um, and secondly, it makes me see how valid 
those points were and I think I did have a bit of an understanding about where I was at that time and I was trying to convince myself that I was in a place where I was being more creative but after that it it went the wrong direction and I was looking for something external to blame for my lack of creativity and I just wasn't looking within myself. I said in the video I didn't expect things to change overnight and it didn't change overnight. It took a long time. Not to bang on about feelings, but I spoke again about my, wanting my feelings to change and trying to use my behavior to change those feelings. And unfortunately for me, that didn't work. I, I know it does work for some people, so don't ignore the advice I gave there. It just didn't work for me. My internal feelings were just so intense that I've had to deal with them in the meantime. And everyone's different, but I'm so glad now that I've, I've got past that and I'm on a really good path now. And I feel inspired, I feel motivated. And I've got some really good ideas for stuff I'm gonna create for this channel in the next few weeks and months. Interestingly, I said in that video, and I promise you, this is not planned at all. But I talked about creativity as a habit and habits taking between 16 and 254 days to form. I calculated it and I released that video on the 1st of September. I'm recording this on Thursday, the 12th of May. The 1st of September was exactly 254 days ago. So if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you've got any comments about trying to get back into a creative habit, trying to improve your creativity, because I know we all suffer from it. I know we're all in the same boat, but I'd appreciate you talking about your creative problems and creative ideas below because I think having that discussion will really help some people along. Thanks for watching.